What if I told you that he was almost sacked one year ago and now he's got Spain playing the best football at the Euros and are the favourites to win the tournament? So, how did Luis de la Fuente turn it around and which player did he drop for the sake of the squad? Stay to the end to find out. It's without doubt that the Spanish national team played their best football in the late 2000s during an era that most refer to as Spain's golden generation. The golden generation dominated international football for five years where they won back-to-back -back European championships of 2008 and 2012 as well as winning the 2010 World Cup. At the heart of this unprecedented dominance was Spain's possession heavy style of play by Luis Aragonés. The notion that Tiki Taka in the Spanish national team comes from Guardiola's Barcelona has almost become a truth by repetition but the fact is that a year before Guardiola took over to Barcelona, Spain had already amazed the world with this type of play in Euro 2008. After the Euro 2008 triumph under Luis Aragones, Spain's Tiki Taka continued under his successor, Vicente Del Bosque. In his lineups, El Bosque sought to field as many ball playing midfielders as possible, including the iconic Baca trio of Busquets, Iniesta, and Xavi, as well as Xavi Alonso of Real Madrid and David Silva of Manchester City. They even won the Euro 2012 with Fabregas playing as the false nine, truly a once in a lifetime generation. To be honest, the coach did not have much work to do. He only had to make sure the machine built by Aragones kept on running. However, as the golden generation approached retirement, La Roja's fanatic devotion to possession-first football began yielding more mixed results. As early as 2014, El Bosque himself felt they needed to evolve and become more direct. Every Spain coach since then, including Lopetegui, Fernando, Enrique, Moreno, has talked about modernizing the team by adding verticality and pace in attack. Yet, despite these efforts, their teams have largely continued to rely on a possession-first approach. As Spain's dominance reached its peak, opponents began to discover a way to beat their possession-based style, which was sit deep, soak up the pressure, and strike on the counter or from set pieces. Subsequently, in 2014, Spain was eliminated from the World Cup in the group stage. Euro 2016 and the 2018 World Cup, the side reached the last 16 in both tournaments, losing to Italy 2-0 and Russia 3-2 on penalties. After a 1-1 one, one draw. In the UEFA Euro 2020, Spain made a breakthrough, reaching the last four of a major tournament for the first time since 2012, before losing to eventual champions Italy 4-2 on penalties after a 1-1 one, one draw. The same year, they managed to reach the 2021 UEFA Nations League final, losing to France. In the 2022 World Cup, Spain finished second in their group, then in the round of 16, they lost to Morocco 3-0 on penalties after a 0-0 draw, to be the third consecutive elimination from a major tournament in penalty shootouts. This led to the coach at the time. Luis Enrique has left his position in charge of the Spanish national team. Of Spain's high standard set by the golden generation, many people view this as a failure, which is not entirely true. However, there was need for change for Spain to go back to their glory days. This change was marked by De La Fuente's appointment as the team's coach in 2022. Luis De La Fuente is a Spanish football manager and former professional player who played as a left back. He played a total of 254 La Liga matches and scored 6 goals over 13 seasons, Athletic Bilbao and Sevilla, winning two league titles with the former, including a double with the Copa del Rey in 1984. Having coached the national team at under 19, under 21 and under 23 levels and winning championships at each level, Luis de la Fuente went up another level when he was chosen to replace Luis Enrique as Spain's coach in the wake of the FIFA World World Cup Finals. He led the country to victory in the 22-23 UEFA Nations League, a first ever, defeating Croatia 5-4 on penalties following a nil-nil draw in Rotterdam. But De La Fuente's road to transforming the national team has not been entirely smooth. In the early stages of his tenure, he seemingly struggled to establish a clear identity. A damaging defeat to Scotland in his second game in charge also added to the pressure from the get-go. Off-field scandals have also threatened to derail De La Fuente's time in charge as well. In the wake of the scandal involving Luis Rubiales during the Women's World Cup final, he was criticized for applauding the disgraced president's infamous social assassination speech. No voy a dimitir. 
Though De La Fuente swiftly apologized, there was pressure for him to stand down and this is where he was almost sacked. However, the manager eventually weathered those storms. So, how exactly did he revive the team? He has been able to adapt. Speaking to UEFA, he said, I support the ideas and the style of the Spanish national team, where I've been working for 10 years. We have to keep strengthening and continuing with what makes us strong. So, I feel quite confident with this existing idea, but I also want to add some small nuances, my personal touch. For instance, I like the idea of playing combination football, controlling the game and finding passes between players, which defines the Spanish style. However, I also like creating creating depth and with running into space. I'm calm because I know the players quite well. I have already coached most of them and I know they'll be able to make this new footballing idea thrive. The golden generation players who are so good at possession based football such as Pique, Alba, Xavi, Iniesta and Busquets have all retired from international football and De La Fuente has shown a willingness to give a younger generation time to find their feet. The fresh injection of exciting talent and the need to alter their approach to maximize their impact have also been pivotal in Spain's shift away from possession-based football. The best example is Yamal, a ridiculously talented teenager who is one of the best one-on-one -on -one dribblers around. To maximize his directness, De La Fuente has given him the freedom to break rank and take on defenders. The same applies to Nico Williams, who enjoyed a scintillating campaign with Athletic last season. In previous Spain sides, those out wide, the likes of Pedro, no, with pace in their wingers, the focus is on direct, penetrative runs. The new look Spain attack is spearheaded by target man Alvaro Morata, who lacks any false nine traits. It's been hard to argue with Spain's results since De La Fuente's appointment. Since that Scotland defeat, they've just lost two of the 12 games leading up to Euro 2024, a run that included a satisfying UEFA Nations League triumph. However, it's worth noting that this Spain side still boasts enough ball playing talent, especially in the midfield with the Rodri, Fabian and Pedri. They continued averaging 60 possession in De La Fuente's game in charge before Croatia and registered more against Italy and Albania, suggesting a gradual transition and greater adaptability depending on the opponent. The other secret is his leadership style. He reportedly goes as far as to message every member of staff personally after international breaks to thank them for their contributions to the national team. On how he leads the players, he said, I want to lead the team by convincing the players that they are capable of doing something. There are many types of leadership, but my version is guided by intelligence, reasoning, explaining to the players the reasons why, so they understand that everything is done for a reason. Everything has a meaning, it's not a whim. This brings us to another catalyst of his success, which is player selection. De La Fuente has selected players who create a good balance for the team. Rodri, for example, plays a fundamental role in dictating play from midfield. His tough tackling and excellent distribution are a key part of De La Fuente's system to get the ball wide quickly on the counter-attack, unlike in 2022 when Enrique played him as a makeshift central defender. De La Fuente has also played Cucurea as the left-back, whereas many would have expected Grimaldo to play after his excellent performances with Leverkusen last season. De La Fuente has not been afraid to make bold calls, and the player he dropped from the team was Sergio Ramos. Despite criticism from the Spanish media, De La Fuente stood by his choices, leading to his farewell from from the Spanish team in February last year, they will need more than good football if they are to win the title. Because in tournament football, you also need a little bit of luck. They have not had this, especially in penalties in recent tournaments. Do you think Spain are going to win the tournament? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below.